Hi, uh, I'm Craig Schaefer from the Department of Agronomy and Plant Genetics and I'm here today to talk to you about equine pasture management. A little bit about my background, I've worked here at the University of Minnesota for about 30 years uh, in cropping systems alfalfa management and my new focal point is on how horses interact with grasses and legumes and pastures. My name is Amanda Grubb and I'm a new master's student here at the University of Minnesota working under Dr. Krishona Martinson. Today we're going to be talking about pastures and sampling pastures for botanical composition as well as uh, nutrient content. So one of the things we need to be aware about in our pastures is that they're, they are usually very diverse. So it's very important to do a random sampling of the forage material that is present. And what we would recommend is to use a W configuration and, uh, or an M if you're in Minnesota to go through and allow you to do the random sampling. Before you start sampling your pasture, it's good to get an idea of all the equipment you're going to need. And uh, we have them laid out here in the pasture for you to look at. First, we have the flags, which are a commercial product, and you can use other stakes and things that are available to you. We have next to that, we have the clippers. And you can buy electric ones. These are some sheep shears, actually, and these work quite well. Our envelope for estimating size. A ruler, which you really should have, have with you because it's somewhat difficult to understand height sometimes. You get misled. Plastic bags, the bucket, and make sure you get a purple one. Uh, <clears throat> and then we have a container for uh, 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 storing of the samples prior to freezing them. So to illustrate to you the sampling strategy and the location of where the samplings are, samplings are to be taken, we've laid out kind of an M here and Amanda is walking this. And what we'd like to focus on in a minute is where we have the flags because that's where we're going to be actually doing our sampling areas. So you'll note here, just looking at the overview, how diverse this pasture is. It's been recently mowed, therefore there's some thatch on it. And by sampling where we have the flags, we hope to be able to capture the variation in the pasture. So here we are at our first sampling site and about ready to clip an area. Just want to uh, point out that this grass with the leaves extended is about 11 inches tall. And if you're effectively managing your pastures, you ought to be grazing them when it is at this stage and vegetative, because at this level it has the most nutrients in it. So now we're going to demonstrate the actual clipping and give you a little idea of the area we want to take. I've got an envelope here, which is eight and a half by 11, and I'm going to lay it down. And at this point, Amanda is going to cut the forage to a height of about three to four inches. Why do, you, do we select three to four inches? Well, because that should be on an average the grazing height that you want to achieve. Hey, we know horses in some places will graze closer, but we're trying to get an idea about the overall pasture uh, nutrient content. So that's why we're going to use three to four inches. Okay, Amanda, go to it. All right. So Amanda's putting the forage into this bucket here and uh, we've selected a bucket because of the fact we're going to be adding forage from the other sites to it and then taking a subsample later on. So here we finished clipping and um, you can see the area we've removed and the standing forage around it. We're ready now to go on to our next site and sample again. So now we've moved to a new site. And it's remarkable here how different the botanical composition is from where we were at previously. If you look closely here, there's a lot of clover, white clover. And again, if you want to have a well-managed pasture, one of the things you've got to recognize is what kind of 
forages out here? What are the species? And what we've recommended is a diversity of species, grasses and legumes. And by looking at this area here, you see the clover, and it's actually mixed with some bluegrass, and there's actually some dandelions in here as well. And you'll want to make sure you sample this too, because it's going to have a different nutrient content in the area we were at previously. So now we're done sampling. And we have our bucket, and it has about five pounds of forage in here. And it's really a diverse uh, bunch of plant material. There's some dandelions, you can see, some lamb's quarters, some clover and grass. And what we're going to do is mix it all up and then take a quarter to a half a pound of it and put it in a plastic bag. The plastic bag then is going to be frozen and sent to the analytical lab. And make sure you identify the sample with your name and a pasture number. And also it's helpful to have the date on it as well so that you can keep track of the uh, analysis results. So after you've collected your samples, it's important to keep them cool and place them in a cooler. The, the forage material you collect is plants, whether it be a legume or grass, it's living plant material. And when it's in the sun, it's going to continue to respire, conduct various chemical, biochemical reactions. And these reactions burn up the carbohydrates or dry matters. So if the plant material is going to be outside in the sun for any period of time, it's not going to be good in terms of the analysis of, uh, that's going to be done. It's going to bias it. So we recommend that you, plant, you put the plant material in a cooler like this uh, to keep it cool before you freeze it. So what are the take-home points uh, about uh, pasture sampling? First one is that you sample the pasture because you want to understand the nutrient content of the forage you have there because it's very important for ration balancing. And as we said earlier, pasture can supply a lot of the nutrient needs of the horse. It's very important when you're taking these samples that you do multiple samples and you do these to a height that the horses are grazing at, three to four inches. Keep the samples out of the sun. Don't allow respiration to oxidize the dry matter in the material. Submit the forage samples to a lab and these would be subsamples out of the, all the forage you've collected and then analyze it for nutrients, minerals, as well as carbohydrates. Finally, have a professional work with you in interpreting the results.